five beginner self-defense moves with your self-defense walking cane. The first thing you're gonna do is warm up with a spin. This is not gonna be one of the self-defense moves, but I do want you to incorporate this into your training. And you're gonna hold your hand with the palm up and the long side of your cane coming out of the thumb side of your hand. And you're gonna push forward. As you push forward, it's gonna start to spin. You can go in either direction. You can come backward, but if you do, know that it's gonna run into your wrist and it might not work as well. So go forward first. Stomach up and in, abs tight, drop your chin, get your other hand up, make it a good habit, keeping your hands up. You're gonna defend yourself with your walking cane. You need to pay attention to your other hand. Now you can do the standing or sitting, and the purpose of this spin is to build callus on your hand, get your heart rate up a little bit, and learn how to strike somebody, hit them. As you get stronger with your spin, you're gonna hit harder. From here, you're gonna bring it across your body, and back. It's just like a slap one side and coming back the other way. Hello, Patrick. Coming from side to side, figure eight motion. Again, your hand is closed here, but you're not squeezing so that it can rotate through. You're coming from one side of the body, the other hand up, chin tucked, stomach up and in, abs tight, bringing it from one side to the other. Hello, Doug. It's good to see you. After you do that 30 seconds on one side, put it in the other hand for 30 seconds. You're gonna do your spin here. Then you're gonna bring it over and back. Now I'm warming you up with my rattan cane. The rattan cane, this is just a really nice, hello Polish, it's good to see you, Polish bread. Elita battling, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's night in Poland, he says. So from this is the rattan uh, training cane. This is a great option to start with. If you're just getting started, this is a beginner uh, cane uh, video. This is five beginner moves with your self-defense walking cane. The rattan cane is really a piece of grass and it moves very fast. You can hit extremely hard with it. You can do a lot of things with this that you can't do from the start with a traditional heavier cane or a cane like this cane master self-defense cane. The nice thing about this one is that when you hit you're going to create a lot of force because it's made out of oak or you can have it made out of hickory and you're going to hit really hard with this but if you want to start with something you're just getting started you want to give your wrists a break don't wear them out too fast build up some strength using the rattan and then move on to a cane master's cane i put a link below for both canes the first one's for the rattan cane the second one is for the cane master's cane if you want to see what the dimensions are or use what you've got. There's no way to do it wrong. So after this warm up spin, you do it in each hand, I want you to add in some squatting motion. This is an assisted squat. And again, this is not gonna be a technique you're gonna hit somebody with, but you're gonna start to build stability in your legs. You're gonna start to get the blood in there. You're gonna strengthen a little bit. Hello, Red Dogs, good to see you. Red Dog says, I wanted you to know how much you appreciate this uh, training. I appreciate you guys so much for being here thank you very much down and up and i want you to do this for 30 seconds so i want you to do a warm-up where you spin for 30 seconds on the outside spin 30 seconds side to side throw in the other hand for 30 seconds 30 seconds here so that's two minutes on the spins and then 30 seconds with your assisted squat you're going to be able to go lower and you're going to be able to do more than if you didn't have your cane especially if you have limited mobility, that's gonna really help. Now, after you do your warm up, I'm gonna to switch to this one. We're gonna do another kind of spin, but this kind of spin is to hit somebody with for self-defense. The first one from the ground with the technique behind, or the, the crook behind you, is just bringing it up and through. So from here, you're gonna bring it up and smash somebody with it. You're just coming through from here to here, it's simple, horizontal strike think about targeting the head or the neck anything you can remove or destroy for self-defense his ability to see or stand his ability to breathe you want to stop him from hurting you with your self-defense walking cane and i want you to do this for about 30 seconds put it in the other hand lift it up and swing it across now i'm going to go back to the other cane just so you can see i'm going to hold it in one hand and lean on it if you have limited mobility and you use your cane to stand up and you can't pick it off the ground without falling down, you can use two canes, one to lean on and the other to strike with. 
So if your situation requires you to use a cane for stability, think about using two canes. A fighting cane for self-defense and then your walking cane. Both of them can be used for self-defense. All right, so that's your first technique. It's just a simple spin from the crook here. Now you can take that same over the top of his head, that same spin. So there's spin to the side, and there's a spin down on top of his head. This is still the first way, first beginner move for self-defense to use your walking cane. You're gonna hit him here, you can hit him here. It's just using the weight of your cane. And this is a nice heavy cane master's cane, made in oak. I like these in hickory too. I like hickory better actually. But you're just bringing it down and you're allowing it, if you look here, it slides through. Andrew York says, thoroughly enjoying, enjoying the streaming lessons. Thank you for here, being here, Andrew. I enjoy you being here and watching them. Gives me a reason to do it, right? So from here, lift, strike. Lift, strike. It's as simple as that. Now, all the, the other hand, if it's not on a cane, it should always be up. I like to have it open because you're telling someone to stop. You don't, you don't want to fight. You're just defending yourself. You're defending your life. You're defending your family. You put your other hand up and you say, hey, you're getting too close back up. Bring it up and smash down on the top of the head. And I want you to do that 30 seconds. And I always want you to do 30 seconds on both sides. Uh, Red Dog asks, why do I like hickory better? Red Dog, I like hickory better because you can get a smaller diameter in hickory and it's going to be stronger than oak and it's gonna be a little heavier and it's gonna hit harder. Hickory is a little bit more dense than oak and my, especially like this is white oak. You can get a red oak, which is I like think really popular in Asian countries. There's a lot of red oak. Red oak, I don't feel is a very good wood. It breaks very easily. White oak is very strong in European wood and American wood. It's very strong. And then hickory is stronger than that. And I'm working on a new line of canes that we're coming up with being made especially for this channel for you, made out of Osage, which is what the Native Americans used to make all of their weapons out of, their spears and their bows and their arrows. So this motion, striking down, striking across, all of these uh, spinning motions where it's spinning through your hand, kind of like a windshield wiper blade. That's the first of the five beginner self-defense moves with your self-defense walking cane. Down on top of the head, it's very effective. Now, I'm gonna have you slide your hand down your cane a little bit, and you can do that one of two ways. You can bend your knees and bring it back up with you. When you come back up in this position, you're ready to fight. So from here, you bend down, the cane goes between you and the threat. And the next of the second five moves is a thrust coming straight through this way. Alita says, sounds good having my own line. This is something, um, a family member related is a, a famous woodworker and has a, a whole stand, a whole a group of trees, a forest full of these Osage. And he's been telling me for years, it beats hickory, it beats oak, it beats any other hardwood that you can get because it's strong, sturdy, flexible, and it would make an amazing self-defense stick. So I'm, we're finally going to put it together. We're going to make it, make it happen. Thank you. I appreciate that. So you're bending here, you're bringing it up here, and I want you to thrust. And this thrust is to go right through his teeth or into his nose or into his throat for self-defense or maybe into the solar plexus or into the belly button, into that thin uh, sheath of muscle, the fascia, right on between the belly button and the private parts or right into his privates. And so from here, the other hand's up, stop, stay back, and then when he doesn't, you're turning your shoulders and hips, you're extending that arm, and you're thrusting right through his face. The ski is what we call it in the Japanese sword fighting. So from here, bend and then thrust like a spearing motion. And if you want more power, step into it a little bit. And it doesn't have to be a super hard strike. If you remember what's happening is this hard piece of oak with a little bit of rubber in front of it is gonna go through his nose or through his teeth or through the, it's the soft flesh of the body where all the nerves are in the face that you're gonna strike. You're gonna remove his ability to see or breathe temporarily or permanently. All that comes from Tim Larkin's book, When Violence is the Answer, we use the principles of self-defense with the walking cane uh, instead of just techniques. Techniques will get you killed, the principles will save your life. Go get that book if you haven't. I did put the link below, I remembered this time. Bend down, 
pick it up and thrust. Now, that's the second one. We have these spinning motions, and then we have thrusting motions. One-handed and two-handed. Two-handed is always gonna be better than one-handed. So these thrusting motions going into the body, and especially if you bend first and then you load your springs, load your legs, and then unload into his body, into his face. And again, if you have two canes, one to lean on, you can still do that with one hand. If you have two hands, two hands are always gonna be better than one. You're gonna thrust it going right into his nose, into his eyes. Anything you're gonna remove or destroy. From here, the next technique is going to be an angular strike coming off of the angles. And we have the angles going down, and we have the angles coming up. Coming down, I missed that uh, uh, comment. Put that back up real quick if you would. But striking down here, striking down here. And I want you to do both strikes, and they have to come off your shoulder. If they don't come off your shoulder, they're gonna be too wide, they're gonna be weak. You're gonna overtax your shoulder. His shoulder's not strong enough. When you push from here, he's gonna be right, coming right into it. Uh, he can't get it through your stick, right? If you come out here, you're gonna overswing. He can close that distance. You're gonna wrap it around his back. He's not even gonna feel your stick. But if you come from here to here, it's always in front of your body. It's almost like a punching motion with a stick, a big piece of oak attached smashing them on one side, smashing on the other one. So you have this angle here, angle here, always follow through to create the maximum amount of power. Michael Sanchez, good to see you. Michael, I missed your earlier comment, but you're coming through one, two, and then palm up, three, four. So the third beginner move with your self-defense walking cane are these angular strikes. So striking down and striking up. Striking side to side, horizontal, vertical, coming down. These basic, uh, kind of like a sword, sword effects. Oh, Michael asked if I saw The Sound of Freedom yet. I haven't seen it yet. It is on the top of my list. I've seen about, I don't know, 10 different interviews with um, the actor and then Tim Ballard, who it's based on. And I've, I've known about them that organization and other organizations like that for, for many years. So I've been a big, big fan of that. All right, Garrett uh, Gret says, thank you for spending time with us. I appreciate you guys been, being here. If you wanna put these in combination, which is what I recommend, go from shoulder, shoulder, coming up, the other side, horizontal, back, down on top. Remember when you do horizontal, G. Carlton, good to see you. Oh, good. Um, yeah, G. Carlton's coming to Tampa. When you're in Tampa, come across the state. We're just on the other side. We're not that far. It's pretty beautiful. You get to see the Everglades. We're on the other side of the state. Coming through here and coming back here and coming down here. You can see um, Gary Hernandez when you're over there. I think he's in Sarasota. Maybe that's who you're going to see already. But Gary's a great guy. He's got a great channel. If you haven't seen Gary's channel yet, make sure you go check it out. There's also a new channel that I, I started watching. Um, it's NY, NYC Prepper, maybe, or XNYC Prepper. I think we'll, we'll put, I'll put the comment below, NYC Prepper. Um, he's starting to do some cane stuff. I really enjoy the stuff that he's putting up there. So if you wanna follow more people, broaden your horizon a little bit, that would be fun. Oh, thanks, Bill. Yeah, Bill says, thanks for all of the classes. Bill, I appreciate you being here for so many of them. Coming through and back and down on top. Make that your practice on one side, practice on the other side. Sorry for the stall. My brain stalled there for a second. All right, it's late in the day. I've got one more class after this one. Been working, started my first class at eight, and uh, we just keep them going all day. Yeah, Doug says, expert caner is the one who does the basics better. That's true about anything, right, Doug? Basics, basics, basics. You want to be good in, in the best martial arts movies are the ones where there are basic techniques, but they're done crisp, clean, and really well. So if you want to be good at anything, practice the basics over and over and over. All right, so we had our first techniques, these swings, striking down on top, striking across. The second technique, that thrust coming through the middle, one-handed, two-handed. The third of the five beginner basic moves for... Beginners with their self well, defense walking cane was the, these uh, thrusting or these slicing strikes.
coming off the shoulder, coming from the hip, coming from side to side horizontally. You can do those to the head, you can do it to the body, you can go down to the knees, take out somebody's knees for self-defense. Maybe it's a vicious animal, you gotta hit it in the snout for self-defense. And then vertical strikes coming down on top. You could also turn your hand and bring him straight up and hit him up under the chin, or maybe he's reaching for you. You come up and smash that hand, and with a cane like this, the Cane Master's cane, you'll probably break, compress that flesh and break that bone. And then, um, yeah, so uh, Polish bread asks if there's a difference in how you use the derby grip. The derby is the one that's just straight coming off of this. And the other one, oh, XNYC Paper, thank you. I was just mentioning your channel uh, a minute ago. So he's, he's live now. So if you want to go see some new stuff, go to XNYC Prepper and uh, follow him over there. So the, the, it comes off the side, the derby. And this is considered to be a crook. This is the crook cane. And so, yeah, there, there are different moves. Of course, you can't do the same kind of spinning. You can do the spinning with the derby cane. And I'll get the derby cane and show you, depending on how it's made here. But, um, you know, the, the crook is a, like a nice axe chopping motion. The derby, it's almost like a tomahawk. And so there are a lot of benefits to having both. One's not better than the other. It's just a little bit different. And I'll get some derby canes. I don't have any right now, but I'll get a derby cane and show you guys what I mean. If you prefer to use the derby cane. I prefer to use this one just because it's so much more traditional. And there's just so much you can do with that big nasty tooth there for self-defense. This is the, uh, the rattan cane. This is the practice cane that if you're just beginning, you might want to take a look at. It's like 20 bucks or something. Maybe it's a little bit more than that. It's not that much. But um, the link's below. It's the first link. If you want to see what this one is, you have to go through that uh, link and you'll see different martial arts supplies and weapons. You'll find that on there, rattan uh, cane. And this is the Cane Masters. This is the basic dojo training cane. And then you can have this thing. I have one in my car that's for an event. It's 400 some dollar cane, so you can get it made with every accoutrement you can imagine. And the price goes up and up. Or you can keep it simple. I prefer simple. I love, the other one's pretty, I like it, it's fun, it's, uh, it's good to look at, it's got a lot of nasty features that will you know, help you defend yourself, but simple is good too. So where, wherever you want to be, you want to spend a lot of money, you want to spend a little bit of money, there's no way to do it wrong. Just get it done, get it started, right? So the, uh, the slicing techniques we just did, the next technique I want to show you are the two-handed strikes. And we're going to talk about like doing push-ups, you're going to hold it like you're going to do push-ups, the first thing I want to do is just stick it right through his face. I want you to take two hands like you're doing a push-up. You're going to smash his nose, smash the teeth down his throat, smash him in the eyes, smash him in the throat. Get him off of you. This is great if you're sitting in a chair, someone's coming in, and you just blast him with it. Or this is a good finishing move. You, you hit him here, you hit him here, you step and you smash like this. Once you've done that motion, you can now box the sides of his ears or into the ribs by smashing your hands together, you've created this leverage point and you have a lot more power when you're striking from side to side. Going from here to here, and then the next one, pulling back this way and then smashing it this way. Thank you. Uh, XNYC Prepper said he ordered the, the Quantum T-shirt. I appreciate that. I just got a whole bunch in stock here, so if you want some from me direct, let me know. If you want to order it from the link below, that's good too. Those are also great shirts. But then they're all the same. You're just smashing here, smashing here. Think of a bayonet attack and a rifle butt strike for those of you who served our beautiful country or serve your beautiful country if you're not in this country. Service to your country, I think, is a good thing. So you're going from one side to the next side, all of these two-handed strikes. And then you take this big nasty tooth right there and you stick it into his jaw or into the ear or into the eye or up through the nose and you're gonna remove whatever it pulls on because that little beveled edge acts as a tooth for self-defense and then you bring it back in and smash him right through the face with that big hammer or that big fist on that side. So just for the review from the beginning, we have these spinning strikes both sideways and down. We have the thrusting with one hand and with two hand, we have the slashing strikes coming all these different angles down on top. And then we have this two-handed smashing rifle butt bayonet, boxes ears, 
rip the skin off of his face for self-defense. And then I say one of my favorites for last, which is having this side. Uh, BV50 asks, is the head ever used to hook the neck? And the answer is yes, absolutely. Let's say you're sitting and he's coming in. You can reach up and grab and rake and pull this back. You can stick it behind his neck and pull him down. You can stick it, I would prefer, instead of trying to get it around his neck, I would have you turn it. Billy, it's good to see you. Billy says he's late. Billy, all that matters is that you're here, right? That's why I tell my students, when they come in late to class, they come in apologizing. The old style, when I was a kid, you went to the martial arts school late, you had to either meditate or do push-ups. And depending on the instructor, it was probably both, right? These days, we're all so busy. I say thank you for showing up. I, I appreciate you being here. So don't feel bad for being late. You, and especially this way, you can always go back and watch it again. Reach out and stick it. I actually scratch my back a lot with these things. With the one in my car, the fancy one. That's how it gets the most action. But I stick that crook right there. And, and you know there's a lot of nerves back there, right? And those muscles. And you stick it in there. And you rip and you pull. It's just two hands. And you pull them down and into you. Once you pull him in, you can let him go and smash him as he goes on the way out. But this is very effective, and you can do it on any part of the body. If you've ever been hit in the ribs, and you know how tender that is, and how, or if you've ever had anybody reach up and snatch it like that, some of the old hop keto techniques, we did that. But you can take that, and you can stick it in here too. VTPTSTTU, I'm glad you're here. That's all that matters, right? But you reach in and pull, and they're in Hapkido Kane and Kung Fu, or Kane Fu, said it wrong. And in some of the older styles, especially Hapkido Kane, there are a lot of ways that you can use the length of the cane and the crook of the cane for come along techniques. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a move where you intercept a kick and you slide in, you, you block, and then you turn them around. And, and this is now facing this way. And you pull that, and all that stuff's cool and fun to do, but I, fi I find that that falls in the category of too much fancy nut stuff that's going to get you hurt when all you need to do is just hit him and knock him and smash his teeth down his throat and get him off you because you're trying to defend your life. You don't need to be all fancy. You're not in a movie. You're not Bruce Lee. You're not Jackie Chan. So save that for, that's fun. It's fun to learn that stuff, though. The joint locks, the come-alongs, the things where you, you know, reach in and just, Turn it this way and turn it that way. The Aikido moves, Aikido with a cane. But I, I don't teach anymore just because, yeah, it, the, like this is not Hollywood. Good answer, X, Y, N, C, or N, Y, C, Prepper. This is not Hollywood. In the movies, it always works 100% of the time. No matter how many times you rewind the scene and watch it again and again, Jason Bourne wins in the end, and he does a bunch of really cool, fancy stuff. Yeah, Doug Bowles says it's like using the fancy techniques on the PR24, that's the side hand of baton, and all those moves. Again, joint locks come along. Best thing to do with the PR24 is you hold it like this, right? This is your handle. You get a little piece coming out here, and bam, you just bust him right here between the belly button and the privates, and he goes straight to the ground. If you need to, you turn it around, and you get a little bit more distance between you and him, and boom, you hit him again, and you go right through the middle. That's all you got to do. And if you don't know what you're doing with it, you start bashing them on the head and it starts bouncing off and hitting you. Best thing to do, get the other hand on it, two hands, any kind of baton, any kind of stick, two hands. You got an umbrella, two hands, just boom, straight in that way. All right, last technique that I want you to see of the five. Tomcats World, good to see you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Said X, uh, NYC Prepper sent you to watch. I appreciate you being here, thanks for the sub. Bring this up like this. You're going to snatch this, so it has three, three pivot points, right? The wrist starts it, the elbow accelerates it, and then that shoulder adds all the power because that gives a big, long lever. And you're going to take that and you snatch it up right between his legs, and if you hit his or miss his legs, you know, maybe he moves back a little bit, he goes like one of these, well, guess what? It comes flying up and smashes him under his chin, his teeth all break into his upper gums, blood's coming out, he can't see choking on his own blood for self-defense. But you snatch it up this way, right? And you can snatch it up here, and then boom, there's that first motion that we started with, that spinning motion. 
Snatch him here, snap him there. Snatch him here, swing here, swing there, down on top. Now you're using it like a PR24, but just doing the basic practical stuff that works. Hello, Silent Walk, it's good to see you. Bringing this up here, from this technique, that's your fifth of the five basic self-defense moves that anybody can learn when you just pick it up and you just get started with it. Just picking it up. Um, Polish Bread asks, can I make one with the Derby grip? Yes, I will get a Derby cane, but let me tell you, uh, I, I'll make it, but I know for a fact, because I've seen many of them, that Gary Hernandez does a lot of Derby cane. He loves the Derby cane. He's got his gray man Derby cane, and he's got great options to use the Derby style cane. So if you don't know who that is, it's Gary Hernandez, H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z. I'll try to find the link and put it below. And um, Pricey, good to see you. Thank you very much. Um, go watch his his videos on the derby cane until I get mine and then I'll make some. And then I was talking to him on the phone not too long ago and I suggested he and I, cause he's just on the other side of the state. We're like two hours away from each other. We need to get together sometime this summer and do some, some videos. My, what, the, the, what I want to do for you, cause it was, it's important to me and it's something that I would, I, I need to see demonstrated over and over. And I know it would be of great value to you is having another person here and showing how to keep the hand on the cane, how to keep your cane from getting ripped out of your hands and then used as a weapon against you. So once Gary and I get together, he and I are gonna do some of those videos and we'll pressure test it. We'll show you what works and what doesn't work. Rick said, Hanbo training works with cane. Yeah, absolutely. The Hanbo and the Tanbo, I was grabbing my Tanbo here. I got them all on the wall behind you, in front of me. You can carry the, the short stick. And the great thing about this short stick is you can, you can jab with it, you can swing with it, you can smash on the top, you can bring the backside through. And if you, you're a person who uses a cane for mobility and you can't carry a second cane because it's just too much or whatever, you can get yourself another stick, go for a shorter stick. But they all work. Everything works. Having options is the solution, right? We all want to have options to keep ourselves safe. You guys have been awesome. Sidewalk, great to see you again. Um, Sidewalk said, build a close-up grip with a carrying handle on. That's awesome. Silly question, going through your area. Uh, absolutely. If you are in West Palm Beach, you go to Miami, you're in town for any reason, give me a call. I think all my contact information is somewhere. Um, Pasquinelli.com, if you go there and you uh, send the contact box, or my email, all my email is in the channel description. Uh, reach out to me. I would love to meet with you. And, and in fact, you guys come and see me all the time. So I do have, um, I, I, a, a gentleman from England came in last year, maybe the year before, it was right after COVID. He's like, I gotta get out, I'm going crazy. He'd been training with the long staff and wanted to stop by, just say hi, do a quick class. And I love to do that. And then I have a gentleman who comes up uh, drives an hour to get here, who found me online. Um, I was walking in to uh, uh, a place where I work out sometimes, and the kid behind the counter said, hey, I was at my dad's house, and, and I saw you over there. He was watching you. He was training his cane with you, uh, your small world or whatever. Can my dad stop by and say hi? And the answer is always yes. This is uh, a welcoming community. You guys are part of the community as much as I am. So you're always welcome to reach out and touch. I, I had two phone calls from you guys today. I appreciate that so much when those happen. And the letters you send me, and when you guys send me the great comments, send me emails, go to my website, again, pasquinelli.com, and look around over there. And I'm getting ready to launch a cane and uh, other weapons certification program. So if you just wanted to do cane, we'll do cane certification. If you want to teach it to others, and you feel like you need a little piece of paper that gives you a little bit more confidence. You want me to give you feedback. You send me the video. I'll tell you what to practice. You send me the video. Once you've done that, I can give you some feedback. We get to a point where I say, yeah, I think you're ready. Go teach somebody else. And when you teach this stuff, you get so much better faster. Those of you who have taught martial arts know what I'm talking about. You, you grow to a whole new level when you start to teach your first class, your second class. By the time you've been teaching, because you, you have to pull it apart and dissect it, dissect it, in your brain to understand it, turn it around and then give it back out. So then your knowledge and your understanding, your ability gets so much deeper when you start to teach it. So, um, yeah. So if you want this t-shirt, you can, 
uh, send me an email. I have some in stock I can send out, or there's a there should be a link in the video that says merchandise or whatever, and then they'll they'll they somebody else fills it. But if you want one of the ones that I have here, I have a whole bunch in stock of all sizes. Just reach out and send me something, and I can um, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how to get you a T-shirt. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.